Hello everyone, Nakura here, and uh, today I'm going to be showing you how I sequence my drums in FL Studio. I'm not going to go into drum processing or drum selection or anything like that. I already have some drums. They're from my um, remix of Dream Girl by uh, Sarah Olimitsamoro for the uh, Ramen Dream Festival uh, earlier this year. Uh, anyway... Uh, the way I like to process drums in FL Studio is I like to do it in the piano roll. Uh, and the reason I like to do it here is it gives me control over the uh, pitch of the drum. So I can have the drum hit like a specific note if I want, once I know the root pitch. And it gives me the uh, envelope in the sampler, which I really like to use to shape how the uh, drum uh, goes. So first things first, I'm going to show you how I get the pitch for the note. As you can see, I already have it in here. And you can change the root note by just right clicking. It defaults to C5, but this sample is in uh, G sharp four. And uh, the way I find that out is I use direct wave. So load your sample in, and then you uh, hit find root, uh, find pitch root, and uh, it will find the average pitch of the sample. And then you just uh, put it in over here and uh, you're good to go. And then I'm going to delete this uh, direct wave because I don't need it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my uh, notes in for my kick drum. Uh, yeah, it's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Pretty standard. You could just use it like that, but... I'm going to use the envelope to shape it more. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the envelope. And then I'm going to set this to like a ridiculous shape. Something like that. See, as you can hear, it makes it real short. And you have your standard envelope controls like uh, attack, uh, decay, sustain, release. But you also have delay and hold. Delay will, uh, you know, delay it. So that's like the delay between when the sample triggers and when you'll actually hear it. Attack, pretty normal. Hold this is like how long it will like hold for. It's kind of like a sustain, but before decay and sustain and all that. And uh, th this is primarily what I use to like determine the length of the sample. So we're going to go ahead and use that. And one of the really cool things about the uh, envelope in the sampler in FL Studio is if you right click on this and hit set, you can control for how many steps it will hold for. And th this is the same for all the other controls as well. You can determine for how many steps long that control will operate for. So I'm gonna hit two steps. As you can hear, the end kind of cuts right off. And then uh, I, for my kicks, I usually like to set the uh, decay to one step. So that means that forever, however long this note is, you can, uh, the hold will play the full normal sample for two steps. So that long. And then it will decay for one step. So that long. And then uh, the reason I do it this way for my hardcore tracks anyway is uh, the bass is going to be hitting on the offbeat. So right here. And I like to leave room for the bass to hit uh, and the, give the uh, kick time to decay out. And uh, that, that makes it so there's not that much crossover between the kick and the bass, and they have kind of room to breathe. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and then turn the envelope on and off. And it's going to be kind of subtle because this kick isn't terribly long. But uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear uh, the difference. Cool. So yeah, you can hear it right at the end. It's just like slightly shorter, more like tidy. So we have a kick drum. Let's go ahead and uh, do the clap now. Make a new pattern. And then uh, we're gonna put this right here. Uh, it doesn't matter what pitch is in because the clap isn't really pitched. Let's play this by itself. So as you can see, I have the uh, 
envelope from the uh, the final project. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn that on. And then uh, let's play it with the kick. Cool. And then uh, let's do the open hat now. So the open hat, I uh, have the envelope processed a little differently, and I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do it like this, and then uh, explain what I did. Oh, actually, let's turn that on like that. This is another cool thing. So if you just set the envelope to basically like a box shape, by just, and you just put the hold as long as you want, and have everything else at zero, this will make it so that when it's in the piano roll, it will only play for as long as the note is. So if I make a bunch of really short notes like that, and then play it, now that can be really useful for certain types of sounds. Uh, we're just gonna do a basic uh, offbeat open hi-hat. So what I like to do is, uh, even though it's going to be playing for longer, it doesn't really matter because we're only worrying about the release here, but we're going to set this to two steps anyway. And then um, since the notes are so short, because they're running offbeat, we have to use the release knob. And I'll go ahead and uh, fiddle with that and you can hear what that sounds like and how it affects the sound. So I'm kind of doing the same thing that I was doing with the uh, hold knob and uh, the decay knob, but this time I have to use the release because I want the sound to release after the note has finished. So uh, let's go ahead and listen to that. Cool. And then uh, last but not least, let's do the ride. Actually, it's not even the last. There's other stuff I'm going to show you, but yeah, I was going to do the ride. Uh, yeah, the ride is real simple. I usually just make the box envelope like that and then uh, call it good because I only want the ride to play for as long as the notes are. Oh, yes, this has a very, I don't know if you can see that, a very tiny amount of attack on it. I'm going to copy that value. And the reason I do this, I almost forgot about this, is um, you want the, uh, sometimes it's, you don't always want this. Sometimes you want to get rid of that little transient right at the beginning of the ride. And uh, just to have the kick transient to be more present in the mix, you don't want them clashing. And that's what I did here. And usually you want to have a value of like, less than one percent like just enough like you could just do it by ear so we'll go ahead and do that there you go just getting rid of that little click right at the beginning so uh, now that we've done that let's go ahead and put that in here and oh, another thing that I like to turn on is cut itself. And you could do this with the pips if you're using those in the piano roll or the channel rack as well. And that just makes it so when the next note hits, it cuts off the last note. And uh, that's pretty good for a ride. So that way you don't get them like overlapping each other when they have a long tail. All right. And then uh, let's throw the crash in there. Let's make this longer. Um, and Crash is the only thing I like to process in the playlist itself. I just find it easier to just plug them in and cut them and whatever. Throw these perk loops in.
Now, the reason I have these perk loops here is I wanted to show you something kind of cool you can do with the envelope here. Yeah, this one will be more apparent. So uh, this is actually something I learned from a really old like Styles and Breeze tutorial. And uh, so if you set the envelope like that so that the sample just cuts off as soon as the uh, note is over, you can do some kind of cool like like choppy effects with uh, loops like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this loop and then mess with the note links and you'll hear what I mean. So yeah, there you have it. It's a pretty cool effect. Uh, it can be. It doesn't always work out, but when it does, it's pretty effective. So, uh, oh, get, get out of here. Uh, so anyway, uh, there you have it. Um, not really the most um, elaborate thing or in-depth tutorial, but I just thought of something kind of cool that I do that I don't really see other people do when they work with uh, drums. And um, I hope it was useful to you. Uh, I'll see you uh, next time. Bye-bye.